Hey guys, this is a tutorial on Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is an application that allows you to integrate questions and comments into your videos. In other words, if you find a video in Edpuzzle that satisfies what you're looking for for teaching your students a particular subject, uh, particular subject matter, um, you can use that video, but you can also add to it by adding questions, different types of questions, and comments. And we'll take a look at how to do that. Now, in order to sign up for Edpuzzle, um, I'd like to show you just a little clip of a YouTube video um, that is actually a tutorial, and he does a great job of that. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I didn't have to s sign out in, from uh, Edpuzzle and then sign back in because um, what's the point, right? So here we go. Let's listen to this. All right, here we are. We're on the home page of Edpuzzle. We have a couple options. We can log in or we can sign up. So we're going to go ahead and go through the sign up. So click on one of the two buttons. From here, you can sign up as a teacher or you can sign up as a student. Now, you will have your students signing up because they will need to have Edpuzzle in order to access all the content. Now, so go ahead and click sign up as a teacher, though. And then from here, you have two options. You can connect it with Google, so that'll associate everything with your Google Classroom with Edpuzzle. Or you can go ahead and create an Edpuzzle account that's not associated with Google Classroom. So, All right, So you, and you definitely want to sign up uh, with Google. So just click on sign up with Google, connect with Google, and it's just about a two-step process, and you'll be good to go in Edpuzzle. Let's add a class to Edpuzzle because... Edpuzzle, even though it's, it can be connected to Google Classroom, you need to connect it. You need to do that for your students. And the first step to that is by adding a class to our Edpuzzle account. So you always want to click here on Google Classroom. And notice that on the left here, I only have a couple of classes because it is summer and I archived last, last year's classes already. But I went ahead and added a couple more classes just so I could show you what this is going to look like when you go in. It's going to show the Google Classrooms that you've already set up at that point in time. So you're going to click on one or more of those, and then you'll click on Import Classes. When Ed Puzzle has uh, imported those classes, then we have class options. Okay, so that class is there. So we can, if we click on students, we can see that, yeah, they're, they're, those students are there. Um, but if we go back here and click on class options, just so you know, if you want to change the name of your class, you can change the name of your class here in Edpuzzle, and it will be that name in Edpuzzle, but it doesn't change the name of the Google Classroom. Okay. There are different reasons for that. And then there's description here. Um, again, most of the time, though, people are not going to change this because it can be confusing looking at the name of a class in Google Classroom one way and then seeing it different in, um, on Edpuzzle. But there could be reasons. Um, description, I always use this um, to give you an example of how I do that. Uh, for example, there, is, there, is all, there are always a group, a small group of students that come to class, to my science class, a little bit late. And so I indicate, you, on, in this description area, I indicate that this is one of those classes where students will enter late. And it's just a reminder to me um, that, that that's what that class is. And then your third option is to be able to de delete the class. And uh, in most cases, we do that. Uh, maybe at the end of the year, if you don't want to delete it, you can archive it as well. All right. So now let's look at I showed you how to add your classes. Pretty simple. That's right over here. You can always add another class if you want to by clicking here. Go through that same process. Let's look at content now. Content is sort of the body or the core of Edpuzzle. Notice that on the left-hand column, we have content and then home, which is what you're looking at. And this can be confusing because, to be honest with you, the home page at least in my experience, is not really very useful. Um, what is it? It's what's trending in science right now. You know, they're gonna they're gonna have that for me because I use it for science. What's trending trending in California, etc. 
in the United States. So this is just sort of a, an, a homepage and uh, it's not, again, it's not very useful, but it is what it is. And then the curriculum uh, button allows you to click on whatever grade level you teach. Okay, and when you do that, it's going to then subcategorize that into subject matter. So now if I click on science, I'm going to have a, a bunch of videos are going to come up that are on science related matter. Now, the beauty of this is that when I go up here to the filter to the search bar, it's going to filter it by by those um, topics and subtopics. OK, so if I click in, for example, hurricanes and I look for something on hurricanes, it's going to it's going to search within science for hurricanes and it won't find any it won't search in any other sub subcategory so that's a good thing too over here you can sort it by date so if you want it um, if you want to look to see what's the latest for example or i'd actually like to see a video of a hurricane in 1988 or whatever um, you could sort by name and sort by duration so let's say for example you want uh, you want a video that's a certain amount of time. You could sort it by duration. Okay. Now we're in content and I clicked on curriculum. Don't need to click on Landine. I won't click on my, my content. Well, yes, I will. I click on my content. Now I've used Edpuzzle for um, a good many years. And so what I've done is I've set up folders that, and within those folders um, are lessons. So for example, let's go to eighth grade segment three. I've segmented the year into four segments based upon the standards. Okay, now all of these lessons have to do with the standards for segment three, uh, NGSS segment three, okay? But that, if you're just starting to use Edpuzzle, this is something that you, know, that you build over time. Popular channels, really important. Popular channels are channels that you can go to to find videos. And I can tell you right now that probably nine out of 10 folks use, teachers use the Edpuzzle channel and the YouTube channels more than any other by far. Now I do work with a, a math teacher who uses Khan Academy, Academy a lot for math, so he, he would use that. But by and large, I think Edpuzzle and YouTube are the best channels, uh, the most used. So for example, if I click on Edpuzzle, what distinguishes the Edpuzzle channel from the others is that the Edpuzzle videos that you're looking at are lessons that teachers have designed on their own already and they're ready to go. So I mentioned hurricanes before. How about if I go California hurricanes? Okay. So here are a bunch of hur hurricane videos, California's gold, California missions, hurricanes. Okay. So let's go into this. And this is going to be a lesson that's already been designed by a teacher. Now, looking down here on this bar, we notice that there is nothing there. What does that say? That says that this teacher simply chose this video and assigned it to a class. I'm just going to go back here and click on some random some random video to find some questions or comments. Okay, again, there's nothing here, right? So let's go back. Oh, let's click on the first one. There we go. So here we have a video that's called How Hurricanes Form, comma, Hurricane Formation. What we see down here, these little bubbles are indicators, these little droplets are indicators that there is either a multiple choice question, an open-ended question, or a comment. Now, we have the video and it's gonna stop at each one of those bubbles. I'm gonna fast forward this uh, in, uh, so that we can, don't, we're not wasting a lot of time here. Hurricane, also called cyclones or typhoons. Hur okay, so the video stops here and there is a, on the right side here in a box, there is a multiple choice question that students are going to see and have to answer. So they answer the question and then they submit and the video continues. Oh, we've got, what is another name for hurricane? Ah, okay. So we must have put the wrong answer. Let's Hurricanes <laughs> are giant storms prowling the world's tropical. All right. So Let's go back now. So that, that sort of shows you what, you what you can do within Edpuzzle. You can find a video 
a lesson that's already been designed by a teacher. And if you're happy with it, you can then assign it. In most cases, I would say that that's not the case because I think in most cases, teachers are, we're, we're a unique bunch and that we like to be unique, right? So what teachers want to do is create their own lessons and they want to ask their own questions or they want to make their own comments. So if you go to the YouTube or any of the other popular channels, National Geographic, Con, uh, TED Talks, whatever you choose, go into your search bar and how about, let's go with the solar system. Okay, okay find, find a video that looks that looks like something you might use and review it. Oh, it's a pop up, lovely. Uh, and, and take a look at it, review it. Okay, so you would push play. Our solar system is one of over 500 known solar systems in the entire Milky Way galaxy. Now, you want to go through that entire video to make sure, obviously, to make sure that it applies to what it, whatever it is that you you are teaching, you know, that, that it's appropriate. Um, because I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten halfway through watching these things and all of a sudden they just suddenly, you know, become something other than what I'm looking for altogether. So uh, you want to make sure you go through all the way th through those videos. And if you're satisfied with what you have here, okay, then you can use it, right? So what you do is go over here. Okay. So again, I'm happy with this video. It's exactly what I want. Okay, I'm not going to assign it yet. I'm not going to copy it. I'm going to edit this. Okay, I'm going to edit this. Now, by edit, I mean I mean one of several things. Notice that the bar across here has the little white lines on either end. That allows you to crop the video. Let's say that you don't. You really don't need that first one minute or that last one minute or both. You can crop that video just by. You can see the hand there. Just our solar grab and pull that gas over. Collapsed, Go to the other side if you need to, grab it and pull it over. Okay. So now you've cropped the video. Now you have to click reset. And now that, what, that originally that four minute video is now three minutes and 33 seconds. And it's exactly what you wanted, wanted to show to your students. So that's a really nice feature uh, of Edpuzzle that, that we use on a regular basis. Okay. The other thing you can do is click up here to questions. Notice that that was cut where we wanted to do some cutting of the video, adjusting of the time of the video. Over here is questions and questions is just that. It gives you the option of multiple choice, open-ended or note. So let's go ahead and pull this back a little bit and go to about the middle of the video. And ammonia. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, sport ring systems, have no solid surface, and are immense. And let's say that we want to send a note to our students. This is really important. Make sure that you take good notes. Okay, save. We've, we've added a note here at this point in the video. When the video gets to this point, it's going to stop and the students are going to see that. Let's continue. The largest Jovian is also okay. the largest planet in the solar system. If Jupiter. I want to add a question, open-ended question, type your question, hit save, and continue. Nearby is Saturn, the solar system's and second largest. That question is going to be at that point. Now let's say that we've gone all the way through the video. We've added all the comments and questions that we want. What do we do now? We're going to save it by finishing. Let's go ahead and finish. So we've finished and now we're going to, and by the way, let's say you clicked finish and you're like, oh shoot, I wanted to add this one question. I forgot to. You can click edit and go back and do that. You could always do that. Okay. So let's say we finished everything. It's complete. We're happy with it. You could delete it if you want to, too. I don't want to skip that. Let's click Assign now. Notice that over here is the only class that I added. You saw me add this class at the beginning of the video. So I'm going to make sure that that's clicked, Okay, that there's a check mark on it. I'm going to go ahead and assign this video starting today and make the due date Friday. So I come down here. I double check my due date. My assigning date is today, and the due date is Friday. And you can even put the hour and the minute, etc., if you want to, and then click save. 
I like to save it to Classroom so I can post it on Classroom. That way when students go into their Google Classroom, they're gonna see this video. They just cl simply click on the video and it's the same as clicking on a URL. It's gonna take them right to Edpuzzle and they can start their lesson. Okay, so again, I double check, it's today. It's due on the 24th. Oh, by the way, prevent skipping, really important. You want that on more than likely because you don't want students skipping through things, you know, oh man, I'm bored, I'm gonna move it to the end and it'll look like I did the lesson. You don't want that. So make sure you've got prevent skipping on. I think by default it is on, so you don't really have to worry about that, but it is good to know where this button is so that if, let's say that you have a short 10 minute video or something you just that's extra and you tell your students, you know, there's another one on hurricanes if you wanna watch it. Well, you could click, um, click, you know, turn off the prevent skipping and, and uh, because it really doesn't matter at that point. Okay, so everything is set up. I'm going to click assign. Notice the bubbles are jumping up and down there, which means that it's assigning it, and it has. Look over here. Here is a list of all my students. Here's the number of percentage uh, that they watched the video. This will show a grade if you assigned questions and gave those questions, assigned those questions a point value. This will tell you when they last watched the video. Of course, we have never here because nobody has watched it yet. Okay, and then this will show you who turned in what. Okay, so really, really a nice feature of Edpuzzle that wasn't here when Edpuzzle Puzzle first came around. So, all right, let's see. Let's go back to content. Just want to review. This is home, which is fairly useless. Uh, curriculum takes you to levels of education, and when you click on those, then you go into um, various subcategories of subject matter. This will be your school will be listed here, and then your content. Okay, again, when you once you get started with Edpuzzle, you're going to build up all of these lessons, and that will be your content. And then you can put them into f uh, folders, and by that, at that point, you'll know how to do that. Just stick all of those um, lessons into various folders. All right, let's go to Gradebook. Gradebook is great because not only does it show the grade of that student, and it could be just that it shows the number of points that they got um, out of a total, but I think even more importantly, it shows the total time that all of those students spent on Edpuzzle, on those lessons. And I use this a lot over the March to May time period when we were uh, learning about and experimenting with uh, distance learning. Um, it was very helpful because, as you know, a lot of our students did very little. Um, but And it was nice to know which students did, you know, put a lot of time and effort into it. And it's all right here documented. So that's a really nice thing. I think that's uh, about it. Those are the basics um, of Edpuzzle. Um, very, a very useful tool, uh, a lot of different functions within Edpuzzle that allow you to personalize your lessons, not only personalize your lessons for you, but also for your students, because as you know, every year we have a different set of students with a different set of needs. Hope this was helpful. Take care.